I, I, I kind of like this sometimes when this happens, you know, when uh, it's been a full day and so uh, Jewel Beast didn't happen. So um, I've uh, been uh, relaxing after doing a little bit of business, watching some uh, videos, in particular Sun Dodger. Great collection, my friend. Great, great taste. A lot of similarities in uh, what we buy and... Um, I thought it was very interesting that My Goals Beyond by John McLaughlin is new to you, and I thought that I would share. I used to have an original copy, and I you know, I say that a lot in my videos, but I do have to say it when it's true. And uh, when I went to replace it, um, for some reason, uh, there was a reissue with this cover. And it's on the same label as the one you have, Douglas. So it's... Uh, it's a reissue by Douglas. I have to look at what year it is, but uh, as you know, this is a fantastic album. Both, uh, both sides. Piece one and piece two. Love it. I thought I would share this <clears throat> other variation on the cover because uh, you were saying the uh, cover, the first cover you saw was um, different from that. You also showed this and um, this, I have a couple of Alan Parsons albums, and this one, um, I haven't listened to it in a while, but um, if I remember correctly, this is a colored vinyl version, uh, one of my favorite, yeah, one of my favorite colors, just a beautiful orange, just hold it up right, there we go, so I thought I'd share that, but uh, I'll tell you what, Several of your albums had me salivating those kaleidoscopes, and then um, you know, I have those on uh, digitally, but I don't have them, you know. And the Fairfield Par Parlor that's especially finding originals of that very expensive, but I kind of felt like um, vibing about a little bit more music, you know. The other day, um, To the Boy Ellis was showing some cool ass records, you know, strange music, and he showed a Ruth White album. And so I thought I'd show mine, which is Short Circuits. This woman was self-taught, um, and just as a result, has a very original uh, approach. Um, upon a first listen, it could sound maybe a little dated and cheesy, but you have to check out Ruth White, uh, Short Circuits. Yeah, this is nice. Textured cover and everything, you really can't see it. But yeah, this is nice. So I wanted to pull that and vibe about that. Right now, what I'm listening to is some really nice improv improvisation by uh, Jerry Chardonis, Leo Franchiori, and Radu Malfatti on uh, some amazing trump uh, trombone work. Human animal. It's a hat hut. And uh, you probably really can't hear it, but um, this is um, smoking in a real quiet way, very intense. Love this label too. Um, Malfatti is the one I'm, the, the uh, person I'm most familiar with as far as their work. Um, but uh, again, this is uh, recorded 1979. All these fellas work would be, uh, Works would be worth looking up. Listen to that, and um, something I'm going to be putting on in a minute. For some reason, uh, sometimes musicians or music will pop in my head, and then it's like, well, you, okay, it's time to talk about them. And I think it's uh, appropriate to talk about um, musical influences on me personally from a social point of view, uh, and in that sense, what I mean is kind of like people who were, you know, um, racially trying to uh, push through, you know, break through um, the barrier in different ways, okay? Of course, we have people like Jimi Hendrix and Sly Stone and <clears throat> many fantastic people. But uh, someone who I uh, personally looked up to, besides, uh, well, I'll get to him, actually. No, that's 
we'll talk about this guy, Alfonso Johnson. He's a bass player who um, has done uh, was with Weather Report and did session work. Before that, I can't remember who he started with. Possibly he started with the Weather Report. He was a pretty young fella. But what I want to say about him is that he put out a series of solo albums. And uh, the first of those was Moon Shadows. And I think um, Mr. Johnson, Alfonso Johnson, is uh, deserving of um, a wider hearing. This is some funky stuff, as well as adventurous. I mean, taking in things as he's taking in Prague, Genesis, even kind of, you know, not kind of, but ambient aspects. There's a track on here with the singer John Lucien from Brazil. It's ambient as hell. He's got major players on this album. He's got everyone from, um, oh my goodness, um, Patrice Russian, Russian, Ian Underwood from The Mothers of Invention, Flora Purim, Benny Maupin, okay, Narada Michael Walden, rocking on the drums. Uh, also, Indugo Leon Chancellor on drums. Lee Rittenauer on uh, guitar. Blackbird McKnight on guitar. Ayerto, wow. Gary Bartz and um, Alphonse Muzan are also involved in this album. And I just, it just popped in my head that, you know, I would bother to play it, but, you know, the fidelity of what I can, you can hear off my setup is just you know it's 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 rank this is some really good stuff you know all the way from like i said from funk to Prague. his um i believe this is his second album is even better realized i think yesterday's dreams chester thompson is on here diane reeves this is smoking yesterday's dreams again if if other VC members have shown this album. I've missed it, but uh, this is one for um, all you funketeers and lovers of the good, the good stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know, another way of putting it is to call it what I used to call it, good black music. You know, no offense or slight meant to anyone. But yeah, once again, he's just got everybody on here. Grover Washington is on here. My goodness, uh, Sheila E is on here. Um, merciful heavens, Chuck Finley, like I said, John Lucian. Once again, we have Ian and Ruth Underwood on here. Great album. And then the last solo albums of album of his that I have is one that I thought where he was really trying to kind of show a new side of a black musician uh, trying to deal with some rock you know, some rock um, elements, Spellbound. And here he is playing the Chapman Stick. I really like this album, but it does it's not quite fully realized, but what I like about it is what it's attempting. Even the cover, I think it doesn't do what I think he intended for it to do with the r rainbowy textured background Many of the songs on here are very adventurous. Prague, really Prague, more rock than jazz. He's got Pat Thrall on guitar playing some great stuff. And so this was was, was um, an inspiration among others to, you know, seeing other black musicians trying to uh, wrestle with breaking out of the uh, what I consider traditional or expected role of funk musician or R&B. Not, obviously nothing wrong with that music. It's fantastic, but I think uh, you get a flavor of me being one of those people who um, has been trying to find his own way, you know, trying to find my own way of being. Some of the records that I want to show that I'm going to either play or just don't want to show them is... Um, I had talked about Earth a while back and I couldn't find this, and so I'm, I, I, it was misfiled. Ex capsular extraction. So I'm going to leave this out and give this a spin because it's been a long time. I also have another even earlier on promo CD Earth record on Sub Pop. I have to. And yeah, this is on Sub Pop too, but it's another one. Something about Star or something. So I got to listen to this. 
a New Zealand band that I love. I believe it's New Zealand or Australian. I think the New Zealand is the Chills. Love the Chills. And here's a 12 inch single of theirs I have. I love my leather jacket and The Great Escape. Both great songs. Man, what a good band. Um, what's his name? Martin? Oh, I can almost think of his name. He's, he's a great, I think he's a great songwriter. I wonder what he's up to these days. But uh, Martin Phillips. Pink Frost is a haunting, classic song that he wrote. So I wanted to show this. Chills. I'd like to get more chills on vinyl. I've got CDs. Love the chills. I also grabbed some more electronic music albums, a couple that um, I haven't played in a while. I love it when I can find these. Um, the uh, electronic music albums from the universities. There's always really dynamite stuff on here on these. As you know, there was one, Electronic Music Winners, that's where Radiohead got that now famous sample for Kid A. Yeah. This I haven't, I can't remember this, so I pulled it to a... Uh... Wow. It's amazing trombone work. Sheila Chandra's been mentioned recently, and I did too, and so I um, was in the sea, so I pulled this one out, uh, The Struggle. This is an early solo album of hers. I think she was still in the band Monsoon. I believe it's on the same label as Monsoon. Indie pop records, yeah. What year is this? 1985. This is really pretty good, actually. One of my favorite jazz albums... Um, it's not a classic, but it's just one that personally I find very, very satisfying. In particular, a couple tracks is Double Exposure by Joe Chambers, the drummer who's played with the greats, but on here he plays drums and organ. Sweet! What is the track? There's one in here. Mind Rain. One of my all-time top tracks. Joe Chambers. On Muse? Yeah, it's on Muse. Oh my goodness. I completely forgot. Yeah, it's it's Joe Chambers and Larry Young in duets. This is just fantastic. Man. Oh, I love this album so much. Double Exposure. It's one of those albums that um, I, I still have. <clears throat> Excuse me. I still have many, many favorites back here that I have yet to share and enthuse about. Even with all these videos I've made, there's still a bunch of my favorite albums I, I still haven't shown and talked about. This is one. Moon, Moon, Moon Rain, did I call it? Mood? Mind Rain. Oh, I love that. Love that track. That's one that I can do in, on repeat. Last thing I'll show is I had pulled this out, played it, and then put it back before I talked about it. Excellent, excellent, excellent guitar work. Riz Chatham. Now let me see if I can say it. Die Donnergotter. Die D or Die Donnergotter. I um, believe this guy has worked with um, Glenn Branca, many other um, of the New York musicians. You know the, uh, you know what I'm talking about. That circle. But this is on Dossier, and uh, um, I didn't play it recent enough to give you a description. This is, man, this is just really good. I mean, it's not typical sounding. It's kind of, I would say it would be a challenge for someone that doesn't listen to, you know, off the beaten path stuff. But it's like it's engaging right away. It's really rich. This is really good work. Just wanted to uh, kind of vibe some more with people on music. You know what I'm saying? Uh, VC rules. VC rules.